Rise of the Triad is a unique cult classic first-person shooter from 1994. It was created by the developers of Incredible Power, a team that was notably directed by Tom Hall, who had previously worked with id Software. At the time, it was published by Apogee Entertainment, but last year, Rise of the Triad received a fantastic remaster called the Ludicrous Edition, courtesy of the champions of video game preservation, Night Dive Studios, in association with New Blood Interactive. And they really treated the game well with this remaster, as it contains a ton of content, including four level packs, The Hunt Begins, Dark War, Extreme Rise of the Triad, and the brand new level pack called The Hunt Continues which is a compilation of levels designed by various and notable figures in the modern boomer shooter scene, including Dusk developer David Samansky and New Blood head Dave Oshry, just to name a couple. What's interesting about the original Rise of the Triad is that it ran on a modified Wolfenstein 3D engine, which is why the levels appear quite flat. However, the engine was improved via implementation of bounce pads and anti-gravity lifts that allowed for a level of verticality and mobility that was absent from Wolfenstein 3D, which did make Rise of the Triad quite impressive for its time. There is also a simple story in Rise of the Triad that involves a terrorist cult of sorts that inhabits a fictional island off the coast of California. The cult is led by El Oscuro, a figure that wields dark magic and whose sprite was actually portrayed by Tom Hall himself. It is a strange game with all sorts of crazy weapons and often bizarre power-ups and even some power downs. For instance, you have God Mode, and even the dyslexic version of this power-up, Dog Mode. Both give you temporary invincibility, and they are obviously quite useful and very fun. Aside from this, there is a power-up that gives you the ability to fly, and there are also armor pickups that give you resistance to fire or bullets. But on the other end of the spectrum, there are all sorts of power downs, such as the vomit-inducing shrooms mode, or another power down that makes you bounce all over the place uncontrollably. Other pickups to be found are actually health pickups, and these include monk meal, some healing crystals, and priest porridge, the last of which can be heated up with rocket explosions and this heating up grants more health to the player than if it were cold, which is a very unique part of the health system that hasn't really been replicated in any other game that I can think of. The weapons that you have at your disposal include a pistol that is quickly upgraded by picking up a second pistol, and as far as I know, this is the first instance of dual wielding in a first-person shooter. However, the pistols are quickly forgotten once you grab the MP40, which is your true workhorse for the remainder of the game. It's also worth noting that bullet weapons have infinite ammo in Rise of the Triad, so you never have to worry about collecting ammo pickups or monitoring your supply. The weapons that do have limited ammo, though, are the explosive weapons and magic weapons. The explosive weapons are made up of a laundry list of wild and wacky rocket launchers. These include the straightforward bazooka, the heat seeker, the split missile launcher, the drunk missile, a very comedic weapon which sends out a flurry of rockets that go all over the place, 
much like the behavior of several drunk men. And the oh-so-glorious Flame Wall and Firebomb. The Flame Wall does exactly what it says on the tin, and watching your enemies turn to skeletons that drop to the ground in a pile of bones while a xylophone audio track plays never gets old. And the devastating cross-shaped pattern of the firebomb is ridiculously powerful as well. On top of this roster, there are the magic weapons as well, which include the Dark Staff that launches a projectile that can cut down all enemies lined up next to and behind one another. and the Excalibat, a baseball bat that can be charged up to fire off a sweeping arc of exploding baseballs. And this is indeed as powerful as it sounds. So, what enemies do you encounter in Rise of the Triad? Well, there are all sorts of guards and patrol officers that either wield pistols or MP40s, although some carry rocket launchers, and a major negative, I will say, of the game's combat is the fact that you often don't know who is carrying a rocket launcher until a rocket is flying with great haste directly at your face. It is pretty cool, though, that many of these enemies will roll around, play dead, throw nets to entangle and immobilize you, and sometimes even drop to their knees and beg for mercy. Aside from these basic enemy types, there are also the Enforcers, which wield chain guns and lob grenades at the player, shouting here catch in the process, and then there are the robot guards that can only be destroyed with rockets, and the highly deadly and invincible, mind you, Ballistacraft, which basically act as mobile hazards. And lastly, there are the monks, the fatter ones needing to get right next to the player in order to drain their health and replenish their own, and the slimmer monks, which launch damaging projectiles that can be easily avoided. The fat monks had quite a high health pool in the original game, and fortunately, at least in the hunt continues anyway, their health pool has been diminished, which is greatly appreciated. And I will also say that a lot of these human enemy types, in fact all of them I, I would say, are portrayed by some of the staff at the developers of Incredible Power, which is pretty cool. On top of that, there are four bosses in Rise of the Triad, and all of which can be challenging. However, the NME, or Nasty Metallic Enforcer, is easily the most difficult. And if you're anything like me, you will struggle to avoid putting your fist through your monitor while trying to beat this guy in his appearance in Dark War. Beyond these enemy types, there are plenty of traps and environmental hazards in Rise of the Triad. And these are honestly and probably the most difficult aspects of the game. Just make sure to avoid getting impaled, crushed, or burned alive. There are lots, and I mean lots, of secrets to be found in Rise of the Triad as well. In fact, they are typically found behind push walls, much like the push walls in Wolfenstein 3D. Oftentimes, push walls are an integral part of the level design and not just for secrets, but for regular level progression. And speaking of level design, across all of the level packs, this is definitely a mixed bag, with some levels being downright frustrating, confusing, and annoying, but for the most part, there is a lot to enjoy here. 
especially in the new level pack, The Hunt Continues, which is probably the most consistently solid in terms of level flow and creativity. Overall, I would say that Rise of the Triad is a weird, violent, enjoyable, and just very unique shooter. Yeah, it's far from perfect, but despite its issues, I still love it. It's always a blast to make those ludicrous jibs as eyeballs fly across the screen. And with that, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe and dislike it if you absolutely hated it. As always, enjoy the rest of your day.